Hello, this is Chiak. We are back again with another set of Detective D, the Silk Rose Murder. Now he said like a, nut, a rose was left by the body, which does interest me. Oh, here's the Evans box. It interests me just because like wasn't there? There's a handkerchief with a, a, a silk handkerchief with a rose on it, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Lieutenant Ma said three items were collected at the crime scene. Let's have a look. Okay. Rose added to inventory. Broken walking stick. Footprint sketch. Okay, let's have a look at it. It's actually quite some detail. <laughs> So now it's not nap. So how did it break? And this is strange. This rose should be wilting by now. Its vibrant color and soft petals defies its age. If this didn't belong to Shi Lin Fei, then the killer purposely left it behind. Okay. He seems hard at work. I shouldn't disturb him. Okay, let's go talk to the... What? I wish I could say I've mastered martial arts, but lots of my rudimentary skills are barely serviceable. Why can we grab this? Not why weapon of choice. Okay, well that's okay, we got a hammer. <laughs> you and use at the moment, thankfully. Medical chisel. Some sort of medical chis chisel. I'd rather not guess how it's used. I can hear you snipping up. I can hear you snipping around back there. There's no time to play games. You can't just pick up whatever is isn't nailed to the ground. <laughs> I'm still doing my inventory. Unless you have a good reason to take that chisel, leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Excuse me. Blasted these tiny tools. I last count again. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <sighs> I've been trying to do an inventory of the equipment down here all morning, and I've been failing miserably at it. Why in the world do we have so many knives? You must be the coroner. I want to introduce myself. My name is Di Jie. Ah, our new chief investigator. Just a young man, aren't you? I suppose if that idiot Liu could do the job, they could just about send any halfwit to run this place, and nobody would notice the difference. I see you're nobody's fool, but I should. But should you give me the opportunity, I may yet surprise you. <laughs> you have a little spark in you, don't you? And you have earnest eyes, the look of a man with purpose. I suppose thirty years of staring at the dead has taught me that much. And I look forward to learning from your experience. Well then, welcome to my office, Magistrate D. I am Yao Chi Nan. The youngsters like to call me Old Yao. Stupid kids and their nicknames. <laughs> I was hoping I could speak to you about Shu Lin Fei case. The Shu Lin Fei case. That poor girl. She's been moved from burial. So, she's been moved for burial, so I won't, you won't find her here. But in all my years doing this job, I never saw anything like that. What, anything like it. I've been instructed to reopen the investigation. May I ask you a few questions? Well, you're the boss, aren't you? Ask away. What can you tell me about the victim's wounds and the cause of death? Cause of death was asphyxia by strangulation. Deep ligature marks marks around her neck suggest that the killer stood behind and slightly above her. No murder weapons was found at the scene, but if I were to venture a guess, I'd say the killer likely used a long piece of cloth to strangle her. The victim also had a large laceration on the left side of her chest. Further examination revealed that her heart was surgically removed shortly after she died. Surgically removed, so definitely not an old... Well, not, not, I don't know if old has anything to do with it, but definitely blind, maybe. 
be make that a bit difficult if it's done with, pre with precision, as you might be saying. Anyway, although I wouldn't go as far as saying that this killer possessed the skills of a surgeon, I'm certain we are dealing with someone with a cold and steady hand. Someone who knew what they were doing. Why do you think the killer took her heart? It's hard to say. Perhaps he wanted a souvenir, or maybe he thought she was heartless and didn't deserve one. Or possibly just because he's a deranged psychopath. You may never know why he did it, but based on the depth of the abrasions on her neck, I'd wager good money our man is a, our killer is a man. Was the victim violated sexually? No. I found no evidence of sexual assault. In fact, she had no other bruises or other or injuries at all, which I found odd. What do you mean by that? Well, usually in cases of strangulation, we often find some signs of a struggle between the victim and the assailant. Signs such as traces of skin under the fingernails or bruises caused by resistance from the victim. But from what I can tell, Xu Lin Fei did not fight back. God, did she, did she didn't... I don't know. I mean, did she commit suicide and someone later took her heart? If there were... Um, okay, getting ahead, but... Tell me about yourself, Mr. Mao. I wish there was something to tell. I'm afraid my life isn't much more interesting than that of the patients I examine. But I suppose that's my own fault. Push away your loved ones long enough and you end up bitter and alone. Or in my case, withering away in the company of decomposing corpses. Surely a lifetime in service to the Imperial Court must bring you some satisfaction. It's precisely because of my choice to put duty above family that my grown daughter now wants nothing to do with me. When her mother passed away a few years ago, I buried myself in my work, thinking I could stuff my sorrows into the ground. I neglected the needs of my grieving daughter, and now, even as she makes her own path in the world, she can barely stand the sight of me. Don't make the same mistakes I did, young magistrate. Hold on to those you cherish. Let them know what they mean to you before it is too late. can't speak for her, but it's not too late for you to make amends. Speak to your daughter. She will listen. I wish I could be so naive as to believe that, but my time has passed. No matter. At least down here, I can perhaps still make a difference. From your previous comments, I take it you and Magistrate Liu did not get along. Thirty years I've worked at the Justice Department. Magistrates come and go and I've seen them all. Some were born enforcers, others born negotiators. A rare few had the gift of detection, while others preferred the path of least resistance. Liu Zinlin was in a category of his own, a corrupt yet, yet inept man willing to do anything to advance his career. All of us here knew it, but none of us could prove it. What do you think he was guilty of? Abuse of power, coercion, blackmail, you name it. But someone more powerful than him finally took notice, and now he's history. We can thank the Empress for that. Okay. I'll be on my way. Uh, you know where to find me. Okay, so until I can actually take things, let's not touch. <laughs> let's not touch. I mean... The only other thing I think is, like, the killer maybe... I don't know, did they use the same sleeping draught or sleeping gas from the candles? And this strangled her when she was... unconscious? That's the only thing I can think of if she didn't fight back. Huh, torture devices. Seems that torture can help reveal answers, but can this so-called truth be held up to the light of day? Who goes there? Is that Liu Liu? You'll not break me with your threats and beatings. I will never admit to kill my own, killing my own daughter. Never, you hear me? 
Okay, he doesn't. <laughs> I feel like I should have switched that voice because he looks younger than the coroner. The doubts surrounding his guilt are palpable. I doubts the doubts surrounding his guilt are palpable. I must find out the truth. Calm yourself, Shudan. I am Magistrate Dia and Jia. Dia and Jia? What happened to Liu? Mr. Liu Zilin has been relieved of his duty. I am in charge now. Ha! <laughs> so they replaced one crooked official with another one. Ha! <laughs> Let's not antagonize. <laughs> I am not your enemy, Mr. Shu. Whatever you may think of my predecessor, I am here to find out the truth about your daughter's murder. You mean, you'll, you'll investigate her case? Yes, Mr. Shu. And though I do not yet know her invol your involvement in this case, I can promise you this. If you are indeed innocent, you will not sit in this jail a day longer than necessary. I, I am sorry for what I said before. But that man, Liu, he accused me of killing my own daughter. Despite everything that's happened in my life, I've never felt anger at my own fate. But what was done to Lin Fei it burns me up inside, knowing that the man who hurt her is still out there. You have to help me, Magistrate D. My daughter deserves justice. Okay. I was a patriot once, not unlike you, I imagine. I fought and sacrificed for my country. I gave my youth to protect it on the battlefield. Now, I'm a decrepit old man, disposable in the eyes of men like Liu and Lin. Were you in the army? I was an imperial soldier in the Tiger Regiment, until the accident changed everything. Tell me what happened. For the first time in a long time, I was home. It gave me a short break between tours of duty, and I was glad to be back with my wife and daughter. And that morning, I had taken Lin Fei for a walk in the park. She was only five years old. The sky was blue and pure. I remember looking up the upon the heavens, thankful and content. Out of nowhere, blackness billowed into the air. I do not know how the fire started. All I know is that by the time we had made our way back, the flames had already engulfed the entire house. But I was, I was fearless back then. I ran inside, hoping to save my wife. But the gods were angry that day. They spared my life, but took my wife and my eyes. Now, I look upon the sky no longer. And your daughter, she witnessed this. You've never spoken about that day. Deep down, I've always hoped that she was too young to remember. But sometimes, I could hear in her voice the horror of the flames and the ashes. Tell me about your daughter. After her mother died, I tried my best to take care of her. We managed for a while. The Imperial Army took kept me around, gave me odd jobs here and there, but eventually they decided they had no use for a blind soldier anymore. But even as a teenager, Lin Fei was headstrong and rebellious. She stormed into the Imperial Army base, demanding an explanation for my discharge. I had to plead with my superiors to spare her any punishment. I told her we need to accept our fate, but in that moment, I could feel something in her change. How did you carry on? For a year, we scrambled to get by. Those were difficult times. Then one day, she came home with some money, said it was an advance from the family she had met. She said they offered her a job as a maidservant and wanted her to move into their house in the countryside. She was only 16. I didn't want her to go, but she had made up her mind. Do you know who she worked for? No, she didn't say. She said they were very rich and didn't want people to know where they lived. Every month she would have someone deliver some money to me. It went on like that for almost five years, and then she came back. Yes, almost two months ago now. I remember it well. 
because everyone was talking about Concert Wu's rise to the throne. Well, all I could think about was my daughter's return. She gave me no warning or explanation, but I didn't care. I was just happy to have her back. You said she changed after you lost your military post. How so? She was always a strong and confident girl. Even during quieter moments, I could sense her calming presence. But then she became distant. Her silence had a different sound to it, if you know what I mean. She was no longer at peace. Five years is a long time. Did she seem different after her return? <sighs> you have to understand, Magistrate D. She was away for almost five years. But to answer your question, yes, she was different. She was even stronger than I ever thought possible. Did she have any friends? No. Lin Fei always preferred to be alone. I think what happened to her mother. She chose the safety of her loneliness over the prospect of loss and pain. Take me back to the night of the murder. What can you remember? I remember it perfectly well. Earlier that evening, I had decided to go to the waterfront to take some tea on the boardwalk. It's usually quiet at dusk, so I stayed to enjoy the sunset. People ask me how a blind man can appreciate such a thing. I tell them it's the heat. I can feel the sun's embrace slowly shift on my skin. Once the warmth is gone, I know it is time to leave. But something strange happened that day. I reached out for my walking stick, which I had placed on the table in front of me, but it wasn't there. I searched for it, even asked the tea house staff for help, but it was gone. You're certain you had it with you? Of course. Without it, I'd lose my way. I had to convince one of the waiters to escort me home. A nice young man with a kind voice. He said he could help me, but only after he finished his shift. So I waited. About an hour later, he came back and did as he promised. So the waiter took you home. Did he go inside the house? No. We parted ways outside. I entered the house alone. But the silence inside bothered me immediately. As I approached the middle of the room, I could feel the wet surface under my feet. I was standing in my daughter's blood. I fell to my knees and extended my arms, reaching out to her. My heart sank when I felt her cold body. I cradled her head in my arms. I vaguely remember calling out for help. I don't know. The rest is hazy. Their daughter's murder was senseless and deeply unsettling. Heaven willing, justice will be done. You have a kind voice, that straight D. Much like the young man who helped me get home that evening. Like him, I hope you will keep your word. That's all for now. We'll speak again soon. Thank you, Matt Street D. Okay, is there anything more back here? No. Okay, so with that, we can go to the house. Just wanted to check. Just make sure there's nothing else. No. Okay. Sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you. So. Okay. So we... It's a large puddle of water it collected last evening's rain rather effectively. The soft dirt in this yard makes it easy to leave impressions on its surface. From this vantage point, I can see a large part of the interior of the house. Anything else? No. So let's just go inside.
You can see part of the front yard. Bed, mat, okay, it's our area of interest. The blood has dried, but the large gruesome stain that was left behind is an unsettling reminder of what took place here. It's unmistakable. This is where the murder took place. As expected, the posthumous removal of the victim's heart caused profuse bleeding, but there's no discernible pattern to any of it. Huh, a dining chair in the middle of the room. This chair must have been placed here for a purpose. Coroner Yao said that the killer was likely standing above and behind Xu Linfei when she was strangled. Perhaps the killer forced her to sit here before he strangled her. But why would she cooperate? What's this? There's a small fragment of wood under the chair. The standing chair is placed next to the bed, but why? Did the killer use it while he was waiting for her? According to this scene, the killer somehow managed to draw Xu Lin Fei into the house and onto that center chair. It also appears that as though he sat on the chair next to the bed while waiting for her arrival, no doubt further hinting at the threat he posed to her father. But why are there no signs of a struggle? Why didn't she run or fight back? Only one bed in the house. This must be where Shu Dan sleeps. A rolled up straw mat. This must be where Shu Lin Fei slept. Okay. Anything else I can look at? A dinner table. Curiously, the two dining chairs are placed nowhere near it. Ordinary kitchen utensils, nothing to worry here. Oh, wait, sorry, it's the same thing. Okay, so really, the only thing we have is this fragment here. It's a perfect fit. This fragment of wood must have splintered off when the walking stick was broken. That means the walking stick was broken in the house at the time of the murder. The killer did not have to use force to make Shu Lin Fei sit down because he had in his possession the one thing that could have compelled her to obey, her father's walking stick. The killer was sending a message. If he was capable of taking such an item from right under Shu Dan's nose, he was also capable of inflicting injury and pain at any moment. He reinforced that point by breaking the stick in front of Shu Lin Fei, but doing so caused a fragment to splinter off. Forced into submission, Xu Lin Fei bravely did what she thought was the only way to protect her father, sacrifice herself. Okay, so there are five evidence to fill this board. When can we talk to the waiter? Is there, like, is there a footprint somewhere? Oh wait, oh here, here. I missed that. Oh, come on. These footprints are deep enough to have collected some rainwater inside of them, so it must have stood here for a period of time. Someone's spying on Shu Lin Fei and her father. Is there a way to... 
It's a match. These footprints are almost identical in shape and size to the footprint sketch drawn by Lieutenant Ma. The killer must have spied on Shu Lin Fei and her father from this spot to study their movements and routine. Okay. I was going to say, there's like a hole in this. Okay, so that's gone. Killer purposely left it behind. So what the hell do I have this hammer for? <laughs> I got this hammer, I just like grabbed it. Okay. Most likely because we have to talk to him about if anyone's spying on him, I would assume. No. trying to think what can I do do I give him the walking stick I don't know where the rose comes into this so second thought that probably won't work okay why this is an option that's like it's weirding me out <laughs> do I compare it anything in his private quarters that he can grab okay just double checking quickly So, hmm. Just trying to gather. Oh, cabinet. Contains ordinary person belongings. It also looks like it's moved. It's an old outline of dust created by the cabinet. Someone must have recently moved it from its original position. The note was lodged behind the cabinet. Was the killer deliberately leaving clues behind? Here we go. Finally, that's what I was missing. The time is near. Slaves will lose heart. The wolf signifies fear, a flesh torn apart. Slaves will lose heart. Is this letter meant to be a warning? Does he plan to do more killings? And what are these two strange symbols in the corner? Okay. Does that match with anything? I'm just trying to see.
Yeah, and it doesn't... Okay, maybe I go back with this? Whoa, wait, wait, there's someone... Xiao Pao. There's a young boy hiding behind the fence. You there. What are you doing? Uh, me? Nothing, sir. I was just passing by. Don't lie to me, boy. You weren't just passing by. You were spying on me. Do you know anything about what happened here? I don't know anything, I swear. I live just around the corner over there. I was just... I was just playing out here. Is that so? And what were you playing? I, uh, I was just... I can see that you're nervous, but there is no need to be afraid. Answer my questions and you can be on your way. I can't talk to you. I might get in trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? The policeman. He said I'm not allowed to talk to anyone except him. Huh? I'm a policeman. You can talk to me. But Mr. Liu said I'm not allowed to talk to anyone, even other policemen, or I'll lose my medallion for good. I've already said too much. Please don't tell him what I said. Liu. What's his name? Liu Zilin. That's right. You know him too? I'm beginning to think everyone knows him. Tell me, what did he say to you? I can't tell you, or I'll lose my medallion. I'm the new policeman in charge now. You have nothing to fear. So you have my medallion? Can I have it back? Not until you tell me everything. Talk and I'll give it back to you. You're trying to trick me. If you had my medallion, why didn't you just say anything before? Clever boy. How about we make a deal? If I can find your medallion and return it to you, you will answer all my questions truthfully. I... You're not trying to trick me now, are you? Mr. Liu tricked me when he said he wanted to see my medallion, and then he wouldn't let me have it back. No, no, trick. No, no tricks. That's a promise. I guess that would be alright. It's a deal, then. You wait for me here while I, while I look for your medallion. I'm Di Jie. What's your name, son? I'm Xiao Bao. All right, Xiao Bao. Can you tell me what the medallion looks like? It's a round silver medallion. It has a rooster engraved on one side. My father gave it to me. It's been in our family for generations. I have to get it back. Don't worry. I'll find it for you. I'll be back to talk with you when I do. Liu Zilin, what were you up to? Perhaps someone at the Justice Department might know more about this. <laughs> God. Yeah, this, uh... What happened there? What's going on? This, uh... This is, like, this is more than him being incompetent now. This is, like, actual... Getting in the way of the investigation. Do you know anything about a medallion belonging to a young boy named Xiaobao? I believe it was confiscated illegally by Magistrate Liu. Medallion? Uh, no, I'm not aware of anything like that. I did hear a rumor once that Magistrate Liu may have conducted illegal seizures and used personal belongings as leverage for blackmail. But those were just stories around the office. No one ever saw him do these things. Okay. Uh, what are the chances? Can I talk to this officer? No. Wait, was that? Okay, no, that's still no. The only other guys in the morgue. So you, do you know anything about Xiaobao? Xiaobao's medallion. Do you know anything about? Okay, blah blah. blah. I believe it was le confiscated legally by Met Street Liu. How should I know? I'm not privy to any secrets or hidden stashes. I can't remember what his voice was. <laughs> but like I said before, the man was a vile leech. It wouldn't surprise me if all the corruption rumors about him were true. Ugh. The hell is this medallion then?
Or maybe I should open it again. Um, well, it's a shot, but yeah, didn't think so. Didn't think so. Maybe, okay, maybe if I talk to, uh, because no one here seems to know would I actually, would I actually go to Empress with this? That seems a bit odd. Oh, was it hidden here? Okay, now... Hmm, I was hoping it'd be like... Yeah. Okay. Where could this be then? Actually, can we actually talk to him? Wait. But then it's not like he can see it. Oh, I'm gonna give it a shot anyway, yeah. Okay. Ah, <sighs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. The plant. Can I look at the plant? Go to the plant. Hmm. Isn't that the same blue bird from this morning? There he goes again. How can the plants, same plant shed leaves in two different spots? We mean two different spots. What if... Oh. What do we have here? I can't pull out the brick without loosening it first. Tools. Tools. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Smashing the brick into pieces may damage what's behind it. I need to try to remove it instead. What if? Huh. What's it made of? That won't be necessary. I mean, like, what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, the medical chisel. The medical chisel. I need the medical chisel. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Uh, do we talk to him first about this? <laughs> I need your medical chisel. Do you mind if I grab it? So, can I take this without your permission now? I do have a good reason. Actually, yeah, I see? I need to loosen the mortar surrounding a suspicious brick I found in the wall. You want to use the medical chisel on a wall to loosen up a suspicious brick. <sighs> you know, if you're just making up whatever nonsense pops into your head, you should at least try to make it sound credible. I'll just take it. I'm too old for this rubbish. <laughs> Gimme. Thank you. Oh, so I wasn't lying, so... Boo. Boo to you. I know I should end the set here, but... <laughs> okay, you want... Yeah. We'll end the set here and then continue this on next time. So, thank you for a like if you like. Thank you for commenting if you commented. Thank you for subscribing if you subscribed. Thank you for favoriting if you favorited. Thank you for simply clicking on this video. 
Until next time, guys. See ya.